All right, let's get into our EssentialMovingExperts.com Miami Dolphins Exchange. And don't forget to call Sean anywhere you live in the country. They're moving Marcel now, actually. So anywhere you're at, you're moving from New York to California, within a state, within Florida, within South Florida, within Georgia. It doesn't matter. Long moving services, home moving services, office relocation. Call our friends at EssentialMovingExperts.com. Call my guy, Sean. And here's our guy, Joe Shad, who was on the field today watching Teron Armstead go down with an injury. So, Joe, should it be negative or the fact that he's walking on his own with a little bit of use? Is that a positive? How do you see this Teron Armstead injury? Yeah, I think Teron Armstead wants us to realize that his injury is not too serious. He went on social media and uh, showed the video of him walking without the aid of crutches. So it certainly seems as though the crutches were precautionary. Um, Tyreek Hill said that Teron Armstead told him that he was good, that he's just old, which is also obviously a a good indicator. So uh, initial indications are that the Dolphins appear to have avoided the worst case scenario. Uh, obviously, Teron Armstead is a, an extremely critical uh, part of the Dolphins offense. Tyreek Hill said he thinks that Teron Armstead is more important to the offense than he is. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but I understand his argument. It makes sense, dude. I mean, the left tackle kind of settles everything. Left tackle is, you know, but listen, there are five important positions, right? QB, left tackle, defensive end, number one wide receiver, and shut down corner. So, you know, yeah, the, the conversations there that we had, we know quarterback's the most important, but I, I can understand when, when Armstead is there, everything kind of settles down a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Now, one of the things, if we want to spin something, and put a slight bright spot here that you didn't have last year, there wasn't a Kendall Lamb making you feel like, hey, dude, by the way, they've got a guy that's done a really good job and has gotten a lot of first team reps because Teron doesn't play, it doesn't practice a lot. And Kendall has actually done a very solid job overall. That's something that last year you couldn't say about this team, right? That it looks like they have a capable backup at this moment. Yeah, Mike McDaniel was asked before practice if he would feel comfortable putting Tua Tungavaloa on the field in the preseason if Teron Armstead was not participating at left tackle. Now, Teron does not play left tackle in the preseason. Uh, He hasn't for many years. Uh, And he said that he would, in part because the Dolphins have, in so many words, legitimate NFL backups at positions like left tackle. And so I agree, Lamb has been pretty darn good throughout the spring and summer. And so, you know, we, of course, hope we don't have to see a lot of Kendall Lamb uh, this season, but certainly it appears he's available as a as a swing tackle option. What else did you see today in practice on the offensive line that, uh, that stood out to you? Did you uh, see anything from Wynn, Cotton, um, anything from Eichenberg or Jackson? Uh, some of these guys that we're targeting, what, what's going on with those? Eichenberg guys? was limited. Uh, if I was focused on the defensive side of the uh, ball because the defense is on one field, the offense is on the other. Hal Habib and I split it. So yesterday I watched the offense. Today I watched the defense until the end of practice when they came together for the uh, last minute drive scenarios. Um, in general, what jumped out to me is Jalen Phillips, and this is what I'm going to write about. Uh, uh, online later today and in in the newspaper tomorrow. Um, This guy is going to be a household name. He's going to be a star. And uh, he's probably going to get 10 to 14 sacks. So I thought it was fun. I told Jalen that he was on the back page of the New York Post sports section today. I'm sure that that's not very important to him, but it is kind of neat. Shows uh, how people in New York, for example, fear fear Jalen Phillips. They understand that he's uh, an incredible specimen and pass rushing talent. He dominated when he wanted to against this dude named George Fant. And Jalen told me after practice that he had not had success against Fant early in his career. And uh, he remembered that presumably Fant was with the Jets at the time. And so uh, he, he was better than George Fant. I'll tell you that. Okay. I like that. I like that. Uh, cornerback wise, uh, 
I saw the Noah Igbenogamy, yeah. Nico Collins thing. Well, apparently Nico Collins was having a good day because even poor Cam Smith out there with the shoulder wasn't able to hang with him. So what did you see there since you were watching defense? Yeah, you know, Igbenogany has shown improvement uh, this offseason, but that was a bad play. He um, obviously, since arriving, has been beaten on too many long touchdown passes, and that was just another example. Um, good news to see Cam Smith, despite wearing the red non-contact jersey, participating in some 11-on-11 snaps. He obviously wants to practice. He wants to play. He wants to be a starter. He expects to be a starter. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> related, unrelated, Tyree Kill was supposed to have a day off today. And he told the trainers, no, I'm going. I want to I want to practice. You got to love that. Got to love it. Yeah, no, they, they they got gamers. I mean, say what you want about Teron Armstead. You know, the, the Lord gave him the body he has. And, you know, the, this is a brutal game. And most of us would be Teron Armstead and worse, by the way. We would all break down in that game. But, I'm breaking down now. I'm going to the doctor yeah. on Monday with elbow pain. I've had elbow pain for seven weeks. I don't lift any weights. All I lift is luggage. Who has elbow pain for seven weeks? So I got to go see the doctor. Eye stuff last year, elbow. I mean, Jesus, dude, you're falling apart on us here. What the hell's going on? Yeah, 48. Jesus. All, it, I'm, I'm all, yeah, if I, the injury report would say eyes, <laughs> elbow, knees, back, neck. Where are you at left guard? Is it is it Wide win? Open, is it cotton? It certainly isn't Eichenberg. So <laughs> what's going on at guard? Who's impressed? Yeah, I mean, even you? Robert Jones, even Robert Jones could be a factor. And I think Robert Jones is on the team. And yeah, he did a good um, job. You know, so Lester Cotton is the better run blocker. Right. Isaiah Wynn is the better pass blocker. And Robert Jones isn't quite as good as the other guy in, at their strengths, but might be might be the best player overall, in my opinion. So, so more balance. I okay. I mean, if if the priority is run, they go cotton. If the priority is pass, they go win. That's my opinion. Probably yeah. win with a slight edge at this point. Yeah, yeah, and, and win. And the good thing with win, by the way, he can also play left tackle. So backing up Kendall Lamb too. So, yeah, although you know, he hasn't gotten uh, a ton of reps at tackle. He's gotten some reps at tackle, but not a lot. They he really have, want him to be a guard. Okay. He doesn't have to because he played right. left tackle for like three years or something. Right. So and he can play right tackle probably, too. Right. That's probably why they're not doing it because they need him first at guard right now. And then, you know, worst case scenario, oh shit, we need you over here at left uh tackle and we'll put cotton at left guard. You know, that kind of stuff I think can happen. So you think it'll be win or or Jones, because it doesn't sound like you're going to make it cotton. Yeah, I mean, I think Wynn is the leader in the clubhouse right? Uh, based on his veteran experience and the fact that he has some athleticism and pass pro ability. Um, we'll see. I mean, listen, Robert Hunt was very encouraged today after practice speaking about the progress of the offensive line. He said that the new old line coach, Butch, Barry is doing a hell of a job. It sounds like um, we know he's a lot harder on those guys. But I think there's a consistency in message. This Butch Barry guy, he just repeats, 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 drills, drills, drills. We have a standard. We have a standard. It's um, I, I do understand what Robert's saying, that um, they sh there was a little bit of room for encouragement in these two joint practices in Houston. And for the offense overall. The players and coaches feel that they have made a few steps in the right direction on offense over these, the course of the last two days. Now, this is a, a an improved Albert Wilson experiment, but it's still kind of an Albert Wilson experiment. And um, a lot of the media, I'm not sure if you were part of it, but a lot of folks were like, eh, Chosen's the guy. Chosen will be the number three. Chosen will be the number three. I never believed that because I don't believe his skill set uh, is suited to be a number three in this offense. I think his skill set is to be a backup to Tyreek or Waddle whenever they're out because that's where I think he lines up. I've always thought that Braxton Berrios was going to be the number three on this team. It's starting to look like he's pulled away now, 
But your thoughts, you're there all the time. Who would be your number three? Who do you think they're leaning to? I mean, listen, Berrios is a slot receiver, so it, it makes sense that when Tyreek and Waddle are on the outside, you use Berrios in the slot. But you know that Tyreek and Waddle can play the slot, and in those situations, you're going to go chosen if you need a deep ball, Izukama if you need a third down catch or a red zone. Uh, or, or, like, or, by the way, like I've been saying for a year and a half, and you saw it this week, running the ball. I told you guys from the second that they drafted him that they're going to use him for end arounds. And sure enough, this past week, they did it because that's the other thing that he brings to the table because he's a big kid. I think they're all on the roster, including Cedric Wilson, assuming he's not uh, released or traded, uh, you know, at the end of camp. Um, you know, it's good that you have options. It's good that you have depth. And the Dolphins but have that. Barrios is your ideal three, really. In a perfect scenario. Well, if, you're talking about, if you're talking about which – here's the thing. Which receiver is going to have the most catches other than Tyreek and Jalen? I mean – That's my point. It doesn't, it doesn't – yeah, no, but it doesn't – it's not that important because Ooh, those guys are going to have 75% of the catches. I know, but where I disagree with you is I think that third receiver is imperative because well, you need no a – receiving tight end, yeah. You need exactly. You need a you need a smart guy to find holes in the off in the defense because they're gonna. Be, I think he's gonna be. You know, was it Linus with the with the with the uh, with the blanket? Was it Linus? Yeah. Out of the penis. Remember, I think Tua's blanket is going to be Barrios. That it when when all hell is like somehow or another these two aren't open, and I got to get rid of it. Braxton's going to find me a hole, and I'm just going to dump it to him right away. I just yeah, I mean, he's, he's been gonna... limited. He cut his head, so he was a little limited, and I saw him leave at the end of practice too. So, um, you know, he needs to stay healthy. He's, he's he's a smaller guy, and that's one thing about Izukama and Wilson, uh, and even Robbie. You know, they are at least bigger guys. If you have Waddle, Tyreek, and Berrios as your three receivers, they're all little guys. Yeah. So, the, and yeah, I know that so needed, it's, bro. It's right. all slants and it's all slants and goes and quick outs. Um, yeah. But at some point, you'd like to have somebody with size, which is why I think Izukama's development is encouraging. He, I, he's I been agree. he's been a lot better in the second second year. The tight end spot is just going to be like a serviceable spot, right? That's what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, with Torrance Smythe, you know what you're going to get. I mean, he's a guy who's a capable blocker and right. a capable receiver. He's fine. He's totally exactly. fine. Right. Um, yeah, in an ideal world, he'd be the number two tight end, and you have a little bit more of a dynamic option in the receiving end. But as long as Tyreek and Jalen are, are healthy and the Dolphins have the option to throw the ball to Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Chain, um, you know, tight end and fullback don't need to be a huge part of the receiving game. Even though Mike McDaniel at times surprised me by opening the game with a pass to the tight end or opening the game with a um, wheel route yeah. to the fullback. So, you know, he's willing to uh, to do that. And uh, I thought it was my really boy getting, yeah. My boy getting Higgy with it has just not been consistent enough. That's been a yeah. I mean, he reminds me. He wears eighty four, so he reminds me of Ben Troop. That's going back. I don't know if you oh, remember the University of Florida Gator. Yeah, yeah. I think he played I for remember. the Tennessee Titans in the NFL. But he has the body type and he has the number, and so that's why I think of Ben Troop. But yeah, he's kind of like Ben Troop. If you're, if any Gators remember Ben Troop, right? Yeah, yeah. That's um, that's a that one's just going to be a, a spot that you know. Hopefully, you'll get some good blocking out of uh. Out of those uh, top three guys on on one end, that'll be that'll be good. All right, what do you got going on in the Palm Beach Post so folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to writing this column about how Jalen Phillips is about to become a household name, is on the verge of superstardom. How he, you know he told me that he doesn't write down on a piece of paper and put in a drawer the total number of sacks, but I will for him. <laughs> I'll I'll go ahead and put uh, you know. 12 as the target, which is about what he had in his first two years combined. So I think he exceeds that uh, this year. I just think that he is um, 
about to be a, an absolute beast. We have stories on Teron Armstead and as well as a, a Dolphins practice report. So, uh, yeah, check all that out on the on the Palm Beach Post website. Follow him on Twitter at Shad Joe. As always, getting it done and subscribe to the Palm Beach Post like I and many others do. Joe, safe travels, my friend. We will catch up next week. Enjoy the game. Thanks, bud. Got it. This is the big old show.